Well, hello, everybody, and welcome into today's edition of One Nation Weather. We're starting a new series for you here called Weather in 7, a.k.a. WX in 7 for you here, giving you all of that weather content in about seven minutes or so. And today we're tracking rain in the southeast and the mid-south, as well as an interesting system that's going to come out of the Pacific Northwest and going to be end, end up being something to watch next week as it works eastward. So let's go ahead and give you a look at the date. It's Friday, April 7th of 2023 for you here, and let's get a look at that infrared satellite. You can see some of that moisture working its way into portions of the Pacific Northwest. We've had some rain, some mountain snowfall in those zones. You can see those pretty cool cloud tops making their way to Nevada through Oregon, portions of Northern California, of course, as well, and then in Washington, as you can see, some more moisture looking to work its way on the far western side of your picture as well. And then a big plume of moisture. It is just consistent here into portions of the Mid-South, while it may not be raining in all of these areas, there's certainly some very heavy cloud cover overhead. You can see some of those reds signaling some of the thunderstorms working their way along the coast of Texas for you here. And then also notice these little blow-ups. I'm going to scroll my little red um, mouse cursor for you here. You can see some of these thunderstorms that have developed into portions of the Greenville-Spartanburg area in South Carolina, stretching back over into portions of northeast Georgia as well. You can see another blow-up of some of these thunderstorms that developed around Raleigh today and to start the day. So keep it in mind that there are going to be some thunderstorms on the leading edge of this low-pressure system, and there's really multiple little kinks of low pressure along this. Here's a look at the Weather Prediction Center's outlook for today. You can see it's looking like a good bit of rain stretching all the way from Virginia and West Virginia all the way back over into portions of Texas for you here, with a focal point for some flash flooding there into portions of eastern Texas, portions of Louisiana, as well as into Mississippi and Alabama. We'll keep an eye on that for you here. As that front is stalled out, that is allowing for heavy rain to repeat over some of the same areas. So we are certainly keeping an eye out for that activity here, as there are little multiple areas of low-pressure sy systems along here. But as that low pressure gets going, it allows for the winds to kind of come on in. And while it is warm for now in portions of the southeast, it might not be quite so warm during the rain tomorrow. Matter of fact, for some of us, temperatures will be dropping in that zone during the day today. Here's today's high temperatures. You can see pretty cool in the northern tier with 30s, 40s, and some 50s. It looks like places in New Jersey and around New York City and um, Philadelphia looking to be between about 50 and 60 this afternoon, but we've still got temperatures near 80 in southern South Carolina, portions of South Alabama, South Georgia, as well as through most of Florida where it's even near 90 in some locations for you here. Cooler behind that front for you here, but here's a look at what's going to be going on for you at midday today. You can see we've got a good chance of some of that rain all the way from portions of Texas all the way up through the Carolinas and into Virginia. Notice in that red outland area, that's where thunderstorms are possible. So along the I-85 quarter from Charlotte back to Atlanta, keep that in mind. And then all the way back to down to the I-10 quarter, we have the potential for, for some showers and thunderstorms. And some of those will be producing some pretty frequent and intense lightning. Now, here's a look at the wind gust forecast for you here. As we go from today and into your Saturday, you can see this is 5 p.m. on the left side of your screen. Now, this is a not so it's actually a little bit higher in miles per hour, but expect pretty consistent 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts for you here from Raleigh, Durham, all the way back over, stretching into portions of northeast Georgia for you here. And that'll continue to work southward into the day tomorrow as the winds are coming from the northeast. It'll take a little bit for that to happen, and then it'll eventually reach Atlanta and Birmingham, where gusts will be about 20 to 25 miles per hour, and not so about the same anyway. So here's a look at your Friday severe risk. So this is today's severe risk. It is a level one risk. Thank you to Pivotal Weather for all of the graphics and that have the little Pivotal Weather logo on them in this video. I appreciate it, Pivotal Weather. Um, you can see the marginal severe weather risk. That's that level one risk. This is not really for tornadoes. This is for isolated damaging wind gusts and isolated large hail. South Alabama for you there, and then all the way back over into eastern portions of Louisiana, where places like New Orleans, Biloxi, getting in on this risk. Nothing significant out of this, but I think the more significant threat is going to come with that flood threat, which is a two, uh, level two out of four. This goes all the way up into western North Carolina and southeast Tennessee, but the big risk is back here. Western Alabama, portions of central and southern Mississippi for you here, basically all of southern Louisiana, and then also into places of the Houston, Galveston area for you there. At least a level one to level two threat of that flooding. And in some of these zones, that's where we're going to be watching out for some submerged vehicles, as well as some at least ponding on roadways and some of those creeks and streams to rise. Here is your Saturday flood risk for you here. It stretches from the western part of the panhandle of Florida and South Alabama all the way up into eastern North Carolina. Now here's a look at Saturday morning at dawn. You can see rain still ongoing with that stationary front here in the southeast. So right along the South Carolina coast, all the way back to the Louisiana and Texas coast. That's where this front is still going to be stalled out. Notice a good bit of this rain is going to be departing from Texas for you here. It's going to be working eastward 
and producing some of the more heavy rain into portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and then on over again into the Carolinas, as I mentioned, into Saturday evening, looking to depart from Mississippi at this point, continue moving eastward. Notice there's still some activity going on in the Pacific Northwest, and some of that's also going to start to come out into the plains, which is going to be interesting for you here. Easter Sunday weather, you could see some rain and thunderstorms from Minnesota back over to portions of Texas, as well as some rain around that stationary front. It's going to be departing the coastline here, the Atlantic coast and the Gulf coast, but that moisture is still going to linger around in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and I'll give you a look at what that does in just a minute, but you can see total rainfall, anything in blue for you here is at least about an inch of rain. We're going to get, in some cases, in some of those purples, two to three inches, so keeping in mind that there will be some ponding, some flooding. But let's play out what's going to be an interesting week ahead, because you can see there's that moisture. I want you to focus on the moisture in the Pacific Northwest. It comes out of there. There's going to be some showers that develop in the central part of the country as we head towards the middle of this week. We're going to keep an eye on that, and then as we go towards maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, I should say. That was early week before. And look at that. Notice that spin that gets going on in the Gulf of Mexico. Obviously not a tropical system, but it could bring some very heavy rainfall on shore, and we'll keep an eye on that. And while all that's happening, very warm weather is expected to make its way in the, into the northeast. This is basically the warmest compared to average that the Climate Prediction Center issues these outlooks. While it will be cool in the west, most of the east, if not all of it, will be warmer than average as we head six to ten days out from now. You can see southern New York as well as through PA. Those zones, the, the biggest focal point for this very, very warm weather. And here's a look at what high temperatures could be on your Friday, April 14th. It looks quite warm all the way up from portions of anywhere of the east part of the country matter of fact so here's a look at those headlines for you on your weather in seven easter weekend rainfall in the southeast this is your recap some spots will exceed two inches so we're looking for flooding we've got that system in the pacific northwest that's going to cross the country and then eventually make it to the gulf making things interesting and then of course the well above average temperatures will return northward as we go into next week